Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. And as you can see on the table, we're gonna have a bit of a busy video. Now, this is um, our Ephibophus murinus, the skeleton leg. Now, I don't think, we may have mentioned it on our success video where we had different bits and pieces. And I think we showed this one with her, just the entrance to her burrow and everything and we said that she had a sack that sack has now hatched and um, we've left them in there this is a really really tricky one to do because we left them in there once before with her and we thought we had quite a few spiders and then when it came down to taking them out we only had nine left so we were really a little bit unsure as to what on earth had happened there whether they'd predated on each other or whether she'd eaten them or whatever. But her behavior has been very, very different this time round. The first time round, she went away, sealed herself in. We never, ever saw her again. Um, so we had nothing really to go on. This time round, we saw her with an egg sack on one of our daily routines. We were just going through. And every now and again, what I do is when I've got um, a spider that's been paired, once a week, I will physically take that enclosure down and I will check to see if she's produced an egg sac. And then if I find there's an egg sac in there, I know now that it was either done in the last 24 hours or the last week at the very, very worst. So I take my date from the time that I find it. And that means now I would be looking at between 30 and 40 days for it to hatch. If it hatches sooner, chances are it was laid the week before the day after maybe that I checked them. So it's not a big issue, it's not a big deal. Now with these guys, we decided to leave it in there. Many of the fossorial spiders, it's nice to actually leave the sack in there and let them get on with it. Um, and I think we get good results that way, although saying that our last one was pretty poor. So this time around, it seems to have worked a treat. And the interesting thing was, is once she had that sack, the following day after finding the sack, she was out in the morning, and I was like, oh no, I've disturbed her. She's eating the sack and that's the end of that. So I refrained from checking. I thought, no, we'll wait a week and we'll see what happens. Well, pretty much every morning that week, she was out and about in the, in the entrance to the burrow. Well, when, when we come to the end of the week, I took the enclosure down and I checked it and sure enough, there it was, it was still there. So I was like, oh wow, that's really good. Very pleased. And this is what we've done. So we've not taken it down since, but, most mornings, she has been out in, in the mouth of that burrow looking for food or just guarding the burrow. And we have fed her throughout. We've dropped food in there and she's taken it, taken it down a burrow and everything's been really, really good. So an interesting difference in behavior this time around. So what we've done now, we are, we're being a little bit optimistic. We have made up 30 tubs here. Um, and these are going to be for our slings. Now, you know that a lot of our slings, we put them in the, the vials, the, the sling pots like this one. Um, but this time around, we found that with the other ones that we've done, as soon as we put them in these sort of style tubs with a little bit more room, they've done so much better. So what we're going to do, we are going to catch these up and we're going to go direct into these. So it's going to be a small sling in quite a large tub, but... If we monitor them right, we should be fine. Now, what we've done here, as you can see, these tubs here have all got a piece of moss in. They've got our normal potting compost and cocoa fiber mixture and bits of odds and sods that we throw in there, really. All sorts of stuff goes into this stuff now. And, um, and we've got them. So what we do is we put in a little piece of moss. So we've gone out, we've collected our moss, which is here. And then all we do is we just literally tear off a little piece like so, and then we put it in, put it in like that. That is it. It's so, so simple. Now, the reason we're doing this is because I don't like using water bowls in with very small slings. Um, many a sling has found itself in trouble in a water bowl. So I don't like to use it. So... By having this piece of moss in here, what will happen is our substrate at the moment is very damp. I say very damp, it's not very damp, but you know, it's damp. Look, you see that's not sticking to our fingers. Our substrate is nice and damp, and the, this will dry out because of the air holes in the container. It will, in fact, dry out. 
So by putting the moss in, what we can do is when we come around to feeding them once a week, we get our, our, um, our water tub, and if for argument's sake we're looking at this one here, what we do is we can just tip a bit in there like that. That is enough. We saw that. So we can do the next one, this one beside it. That is enough. No more than that. And then what that does then is that moss will absorb the water and our sling will come out and it will drink from the saturated moss. But as you saw there, you need very, very little water on that moss. The more the moss dries out, the more water you can put to it. But don't overdo it because we don't want the enclosure to end up in a wet mess. So it's very important, although you're keen to get water into your individual spider, its environment is far more important. Try and always maintain the, the importance of the environment. That is what gives you a healthy spider. So we are here now. We've got our 30 tubs. They're all ready to go. We've got our lids. Make sure you count 30 lids because we've been there before. We've only had 28 lids and we throw one in there and we're like, oh, we've got a lid. Make sure you've got all your lids ready. We've got a catch cup for our adult female and we've got a little vial pot which we're going to use to catch the babies out of the enclosure. So let's get in here and have a look. I'm going to take this lid off. Now this is the first time that we've really been in and disturbed this spider. We don't, we don't want to be disturbing her any more than necessary. And it's a shame, but we're going to have to destroy this little home of hers. She will rebuild it again. It's not a big deal. But this is the nursery. Now we can see down in here. I'm sure we can get a nice close-up look in there. And you can see all this webbing on the outside. This is where, in the mornings, our spiderlings have been hanging out on this edge. And they've all been sitting there. And they're all the way through here. This is a piece of bark under here. And it runs all the way back to this back corner. And then it goes down. So... The only way we're going to be able to do this is we're going to have to pull this off and expose our female. So we're going to take our water bowl out because we don't really want any mess from that. And, uh, right. Can you see in there? I don't know if we can get a bit of a light down there. You might be able to see them. How does that work? Oh yeah, look at them all in, in the top of it. You can see them all up in the top in like the roof of the burrow. Typically the web is more dense than... You should be able to see if you come from here, from this angle. Yeah. Oh yeah, so you've got to zoom right in, all the way in, past the web, past the web. There oh, we wow. go. Ooh. Just find that sweet spot. Ooh. What a shame. No, you're all right. Now just back up a little. Ooh. There they are. So go in nice and gently. Don't move the camera. And we will see them. Go past the web. Well, there they are. Now you oh, can wow. see them all in there. It's very, very difficult to film through the web. But we can see them all hanging out. Thank you, Dave. Pretty impressive, aren't they? Right. So what we're going to do... We are now going to get our paintbrush, we're going to get our catch box because these spiders, um, the skeleton leg, they can be very, very defensive. And a mum protecting her babies has got good reason to be defensive. So we don't want to take any chances. And the best way that we can deal with that is to try and get her out. Now, we have two options. If our female goes down and disappears, we will carry on and leave her there, right up until the point where we can't do any more. If she becomes really, really defensive, then we will catch her up and remove her from the situation. And this will cut down all the stress. Once she finds herself in this box, she will chill out and change her attitude completely. It's very, very quickly. As many people sort of think that um, our spiders sulk or, you know, she'll be in the box missing her babies. They don't work like that. Spiders work in the moment, the very, very moment that we're in. That is what they react to. Once that moment has changed and moved on, they're now in the next moment. So 
don't worry about her being a little bit upset because it is going to happen. Right, so what we're going to do, we're going to take back, you see this hasn't been pulled out for so, so long. Now we can take our moss back. In fact, what we'll do, I think we'll take it out all together. Safe the little blights getting on it. Yep. And then what we need to do now is try and take this soil off. She will know there's something going on now. You see how dry it is? We've kept it very, very dry. And then what we're gonna do, we are gonna try and lift this up. Now there should be a silk tube under here. Yep, we are staying intact. There we go. So that's our piece of wood out. Now you can see here now, you can see the structure of, an, of a fossorial spider. The entrance is here and she's built this all the way through. And this goes right the way down to the bottom, down to here, and we can see here, and then it goes underneath. But it almost ends here. She don't really go that far further than here, but it will go in a little way. Now then, we could get rather fancy here, and we're gonna pull that out. Always remember, be careful of your fingers now, because Although we can see this web here, we don't know if it breaks off or goes anywhere else. And what I'm thinking is, I'm wondering whether we can lift the whole tube out. Is it that strong? Yeah. Obviously the very, very bottom will stay in there. And we're going to use our fingers to pull this through. Getting a lot of reflection, so can you come around this way a little bit? Yep. So you're around the corner in a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this out. Just make ourselves a little bit easier. See how that collapsed there? Hopefully we can get that. See how it's like peeling off the glass? See that? Mm -hmm. So we've, we've broken the edge. Well, right, there's our female. She's there. Be nice if she actually came out now. Don't think she's gonna though. Right, so what we're gonna do now, we'll turn this around here, and we're gonna try and lift that out. So what we're going to do, we're going to try and lift this whole structure outside, if that is at all possible. So we're going to get a tray, and we can just dump it all on the tray. Right, this is something we've not tried before, so let's see how we go, shall we? Bearing in mind, be very, very careful, your spider can bite straight through the web. So we have to be a little bit careful of that. And there's a lot of slings in there, yeah. We're not 100% sure where it all goes. There we go. She is still down there in the bottom. It's rather an interesting way of doing things. There's one sling there. So we'll look that one out now. I'll try to anyway. No, he's gone down. Okay. All right. Where is our female? Our female is here.
Unfortunately, that is buried. There she is. Here's our female. So what we're going to do now, we're going to try and ease her out. Here she comes. Complete with babies. Look, they're everywhere. Look at that for a shot. There she is. I'm going to use the tub to go behind her so she can't go back down. And then we're going to try and move her in. Gently does it. There you go. Now look at that. We got that without any hassle at all. She's in there. You pick some good pickies around the bay, you know? There we go. Yep, we'll get some nice shots of her later on. We'll move her out of the way now. Put her over there in the quiet. And as you can see then, we have babies darting off in all directions. No, I can't see a single one. No, they've all hidden away. Here's one. Now we can see there's going to be lots of them, hopefully. Right, so we'll put this one in, and then we can, there's some on the floor here, there's the odd one here and about, so, what we'll do is we'll, we'll just whip, whip our way through them, and then we'll try and get a proper look. Where did that one go? Kind of disappeared. Kind right of disappeared. All right, okay. There's another one. Oh. So they look to be good strong slings. Right then. Let's see what we've got here. Now we've got her out, we can in fact just try and get down and pick this up. It is all the way down the bottom though. Oh, they're all coming out the bottom. And there's a lot of them. See them all in there. It's all over here too, look. Yep, yeah, they're everywhere. Okay. There's one for the glass. Oh, that was maybe not the idea to do. Mm. All right. Okay, right, let's just hook them out. We'll try and catch them up now. Now this is often the time consuming part. And we literally we just catch them up as we go. I'm trying to push it through the glass here, look. <laughs> We'll leave that one there for a moment. Man. Well, I'm not used to it, no. See? Wow, did you see that? He jumped. He literally jumped. Beautiful little spiders. As you can see there, it's quite a small spider in a fairly large home. Now, generally speaking, we like to keep them a little bit on the smaller side uh, so that we can monitor their food. But this particular species, we found they do seem to appreciate that little bit of extra space. Look at this lot here. We can see them all here. There's a good few there. Right. 
Now we know this is full of spiders, so, or it was a minute ago. Whoa! Catch it, Dave, catch it. Is he corn? Which left? Yep. There he is. That's it, you put it on top of the box that I'm doing, that's, that's really helpful. Right. So as we can see, these, are, these have come out now really at the perfect time. You can see they're very, very mobile. Really mobile. So that's a good thing. And all we can do now is just literally go through nice and slowly. There we go, just feed them out of the, there it is. They are super, super quick. Another one waiting for you. Whoa! <laughs> it's all right. Go on. Well, this one does not want to leave. Hello? Look at that. Look down there. There's nothing there. What we coming out at the other end? No, he'll be in there. Here he comes. <laughs> These guys are very, very quick. Be careful, because that's... Got to tickle it. Tickle it. Oh, I think what we there's one. You see how quick they bolt. Oh my golden thing. Have your lid ready, babe. Have your lid ready. <laughs> they are super fast. Right. I can hear you all saying, are they really that quick or are you just slow? There is this one he comes he's coming. He come round that way, didn't he's he? Yeah, he's underneath there. It's right where your finger was. Okay. Oh, he's there, Dave, by your paintbrush. No, that's probably the other one. <laughs> there was. Oh my god! There was two of them. There we go. Oh, no, don't do that. All right, we have got one more here. No, it's not there. Don't worry, we will hook him out later. We will catch him up later. He'll be sitting tight somewhere. It's not the end of the world. Right. See if we can't break into... There goes another one. Oh, Dave. <laughs> Where are these little guys going? They are so, so quick. Oh, look, look, look. There's a big bunch of them in there. Right, just tickle them out. Tickle them out. Just get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he got out. Maybe he's gone as well. <laughs> You're not being very helpful here. <laughs> Apart from getting in my way. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. Oh, no, he's right over there in there now. Look, he's, he's by the pill pot in there. Oh, I see him. Yeah, we'll leave him there. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be fine. We need to work out a better thing of putting these in, I think, because um, you need to tickle them. They are literally just charging out in the blink of an eye. Oh, Dave! Oh, Dave! <laughs> <laughs> Enjoying this? Yes. 
you know how hard my job is now? Right. How good I am at it, just saying. If we do away with a tray, we're fed up with that idea. <laughs> As you can see, the um, the words of moral support coming from camera lady are a little bit l few and far between. This is the best fun she's had in ages. I think we've got some in there somewhere. We've got a few. We're no good. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have a look. There'll be a few under there. Right. Whose idea was this in the first place? This is not a good idea. Right. <laughs> this is one of them times where you're actually hoping that there is only 30. Now, we know we've got a few loose on the table. We will come back to them in a moment. They're in here, there we go. I cannot get over how fast these little guys are. Super, super quick. This is definitely the better way of doing them. You see how we have to adapt? If one idea doesn't work, Move on to the next one, smartish. Oh, I think we might have had them all out of there. No way. Yeah. Oh, I'll put them on the desk, ain't they? I apologise now if the um, if it's all a bit shaky on the filming. Because of my laughing. Yeah, because the camera lady's laughing. Oh. It's probably playing havoc with the wow with the filming. No, it's quite funny. This is what we were trying to do. <laughs> Even when you get it in the tub, it don't stay in there very long. Look at them, they're like... They are so quick. Remember, be calm. <laughs> be gentle. Do you know what? This would have been a whole lot worse had we been trying to get them into one of these little pots with some soil in it. I think we would have had right fun and games. All right, what I want to do now is, oh. wow. Ooh, <laughs> Remind me of the Max. There he goes. <laughs> I could come out with a few things that these remind me of, but we have lots of little young listeners so we'll refrain from some of the things that we may have called them. This this is just like one big sock. And uh, they are in there. So what we're doing is we're just going to try and tease them out and throw them in the tub. <laughs> that seemed to work really well. Right. Have you ever known slings give us so much trouble as these guys? Wow, even our sailies weren't this bad. Lids. <laughs> Do you remember, guys, I was telling you, keep your lids handy. It's all falling apart. It's all falling apart. I can't concentrate with camera ladies laughing. Right. Here we go, we're going to have another go. Oh dear. All right. Who's next to give us a headache? This one.
Now then, I don't want to see in the comments any complaints about I didn't get to see the spiderlings properly. These are really, really quick. We'll have a look in a minute. Yeah, what we're going to do, we're going to get one and we're going to sedate it <laughs> so we can get a nice close up look at it. No, only joking, only joking. We won't sedate it. It's a shame we couldn't have sedated the whole sack. They're absolutely crazy. Literally, here he comes. All right, you might actually get a look at this one. This one's sitting quite still. We can see him there. And you can see why the benefit of having the moss inside this little enclosure. He can actually burrow down underneath the moss. And like we were saying earlier on, he will suck out the moisture out of this moss as well and they will but even at this stage they will build a little tiny web tunnel and you can see he's on the move there you see how he's calmed down a little bit now it's funny isn't it the adult female gave us a whole lot less hassle than these tiny tiny little things now these are only like one to two centimeters in size Absolutely fabulous looking individuals. That's really cool. Well, I'll try. I will try. Oh my god, you've seen all them in there. All right. All right, so what we're going to do now, we are there. So we're going to take that off. That means we can get rid of this bit. Make sure there's none on the outside. We'll have a look at that. That's such lovely webbing. Look at that. You can see how that gives them such a lovely secure home. Now then. I'm almost frightened to break into this. <clears throat> Here we go. Whoa. One at a time, guys. One at a time. <laughs> I can't Whoa. Are these... <laughs> Lid. <laughs> oh, God. Shush now, camera lady. Shush. Dear me. Right. Let's try again. Uh -huh. They all bolt at once. It's no, it's, it's no laughing matter. You're not tickling. You can't tickle. <laughs> you the only thing laughing here is you. You can't slow down when it's doing a hundred mile an hour. <laughs> oh, dear me. What? I think we're almost. Oh. I can never know if it's soil through this. It looks like it's waggling. Uh, if he's in shock. Right. All right. I do believe we've emptied that piece. Wow. Don't think there's any in there, is there? No. Right. I'll put that one in there. 
It's a little bit quiet that one. Oh no, he's alright. He's alright. Alright. He's just not half crazy like all his mates were. Right, we've got four more to do here. Um, there's still quite a lot in here, so what we'll do is we'll we'll hook them out of here. All saying that, we have I think what we might do is get the ones on the table, shall we, before we break into the, um, or break out or whatever, which way we look at it. Mm. No longer by the pot. What an absolute disaster. It's a disaster. Can we see them? <laughs> oh, there he is. You found him? Yeah. Oh, there he is. All right, there's one. Oh, we're getting good at this now. <laughs> Eventually. No, I wouldn't do that. It'll run it to you. Problem is when you when you run your fingers underneath like that, you very easily squash them. Mm. Right, we've got two left here. So let's see what we've got. We're gonna lift this tank out of the way. There's one. No. Alright. So maybe there was just the one. Do you think so? I don't know if it's a I can't Alright. There's another one just there. Okay. Yeah. Yep, we got him. Right, that is our runaways. So I think we have three runaways and we've got them. Right, so that is 30 in there. Oh dear. And I think. I think what we're going to do now, we are going to cut it there because this is going to take a little bit of time and we need to make up some more boxes and catch up the remaining of the ones here. I'm starting to think actually that it might have been easier if we kept them all in there and rather than taking out that web, I was hoping we would have picked the whole web up and I thought as like most of them, they would have stayed in the web, but oh no, this lot, they decided to break for freedom and they went in every direction possible, as you saw there. <laughs> Much to the delight of camera lady. By the way, there is a new position for a camera lady here in the beastie room. Um, this one is no longer adequate. Um, not helpful whatsoever. So, <laughs> right, we'll be back in a moment. Hello, guys, we're back. As you can see, we have got one completely empty enclosure now. 
Um, we were hoping that we'd be able to save most of it to be able to get it back in, but we are down to um, literally the stones in the bottom. And there is all our spidlings. Now this probably took us, must have been a good hour and a half or more, wasn't it? To um, catch them all up and uh, get them in this box. There was a fair few in there. I wonder if anyone can guess how many there was. Should we tell them? I know. <laughs> you do know. Right. We actually had 113. So very, very pleasing. That was really good. So what we're going to do now is we are going to give this tank here, this enclosure, a quick clean. And then we're going to pop her back in here. So we're going to do a rehouse at the same time. So we're going to just give that a quick... We don't need to be too fussy about this. Now we're basically going to use everything that we had in it before. Um, let me turn this around. So all of the soil that we took out is going to go back in. Um, we're just using this opportunity really just to spruce it up a little bit because it was pretty filthy. And um, this is the thing. When you're breeding your spiders or whatever, once you know that there's something going on, you don't get a lot of opportunity to get in and have a bit of a clean up. And as you'll know, the one thing I do like to try and do is keep the front glasses clean. If I can keep them clean, I'm happy. The rest of it, the backs, the sides, I'm not overly worried about. No big shakes, you know. And uh, the spiders will decorate it themselves, as we often know. So what we're going to do... So we've got that down there. That's it. That is all it needs. So that is much, much cleaner. We can take our information off of there because we don't need that anymore. That can go. Just make sure the front is particularly clean. That's what we like. Right, there we go. So what we got, we're going to use our old mesh. That can go back in. As you can see, all this stuff is all reusable. We don't need to um, worry too much. The mesh is only there to stop the soil going down into the stones. Now, as you can see, if we peel that back, you'll see there is a bit of soil in this. But that is not the end of the world. It's still going to do the same job. Even though there's a little bit in it, it's still going to do exactly the same job. It's just literally to allow the soil that we put on top to drain through into the stones. And if, now we get away with here, with a very uh, thin layer of stone in here, because we've, we're very adept at how much water we're putting in and what we're doing. And we look at many different things to decide how much moisture we want within our soil. If you're a little bit new to it and you're still sort of playing around with um, humidity and things like that, put a slightly deeper, deeper thing in there and that will give you more leeway, more chance to, um, you know, overdo the water, should I say. Because once it's down in the stone, it's not so bad. So we've got the soil that we had taken out is in here. So we are literally going to pour that straight back in. Didn't seem like we had that much in there, did it? Mm -hmm. And this is because we've fluffed it all up now. So what we can do is we can push that down a little bit. All that in there like that. I'm going to make a little bit of a bank for her here. So it looks a little bit, there's a little tiny bit left in the bag. We'll have that.
There we go, that's the lock. There seriously didn't seem to be that much in there, did there? All right. So we're going to mound this up here, get a nice high back on this one, I think, this time round. And then we're going to use the same piece of wood that we had before. So this is it here. Uh, what we're going to do, I think this time around, we're going to put it more into the edge, like so. And what I'm hoping is, if we create a little bit here, we can get her to sit out just on here. That'd be nice. All right then. So we've got some moss here. So we're going to cover it up again in moss and see where we go with that. This is nice fresh moss, this is. This has been, what we do is once we collect it up, we put it out in the garden and leave it in the grass. And uh, that literally makes it grow pretty mad. It gets, it gets really quite quite full on it looks really good as well once we pick it back up again because it's very very wet and moist so it's ideal uh, what we will do is we'll take a bit of this soil here put over here there we go let's just pull that up again put that in there Try not to get it all filthy use this piece here up here. Now when you put your moss on your on your wood like this, it does need extra moisture. Keep more moisture in it because it will dry out quicker than the stuff that's on the sides. There we go. See how this is gonna work. Right, we've got a water bowl here somewhere. Tip that in there. Put a water bow over in this corner because she is going to excavate quite a bit of this. So there's going to be some some soil flying everywhere. I'm going to use a little bit of this. Put that down there. And we're going to leave it like that, I think, because she will hopefully web this front piece up. So it should. Look quite smart once she's finished playing around with it. Right, so I'm just going to wipe the glass again. And we're going to get it nice and clean. And that is all we need to do. You can see there, we don't have to be too fussy. Get it just where we want it. Right, that good. Right then, so we got our female here. She is absolutely gorgeous. Let's find me a paintbrush. So what we're going to do now, we're going to we're going to take the lid off, and hopefully she's going to sit tight and not run away. Now you remember these are these are a very defensive spider. And a lot of this is because being a fossorial spider, they literally dig down and they just do not get disturbed. Now, as you can see there, we can. this is where they get their neck. See how fast she is? Very, very quick. Ooh. Now you see now, this is the defensive behavior that we were talking about. So we can just watch her, keep an eye on her. Now we can look at this... Um, we can look at this um, behavior now and you can see now where she is actually staying in a stance. Now that is a that is a full on threat display there now. So we can get a real nice close up in there. And you can see how she's holding her fangs. Different to when they're pairing. When they're pairing, the fangs are really, really splayed open. But you can see these are sort of semi splayed. The feet are up, the pedipalps are up. Everything there. She is ready to attack anything that should antagonize her. 
which is really not in a nice place at the minute, though, is she? No. Now, bearing in mind that she's just been moved out of her enclosure, put in this new one, well, waiting in her box to go into her new one. So everything is feeling a little bit alien. Now, what we're going to do now... Yeah, you can see this is what we were looking at before. And all we done was we got sort of like within this range of her and she freaked out like that, you see? We're not touching her, we're not doing anything, but she can feel that. Now, to some extent, she must be able to see as well. Now, as you can see there, our cricket tub is sitting on top of the lid, which makes this a little bit awkward for us to actually get it back. So what we're going to do, we're going to get another cricket tub. Now you see she's catching. Yeah, she's getting upset. She's catching movement now. So what we do? Come around this side. What we're going to do? We're going to use a new lid. We're going to slide slide it in. You can see how the ferocity there. So what we do now? So we're going to move her up. And then hopefully, let go of the box. There we go. There we go. Now, as you can see now, she's actually responding to any kind of changing light at the moment so we can I'll move this around and you can see now this is very very typical behavior of this this particular species now you'd have remembered as when we took her out of the enclosure we saw none of this at all and we'd literally just removed her from her uh, nursery full of babies and we didn't see anything at all now, since we've been um, working away, she's been sat in that box now for the last hour and a half or so. And um, she is now fully settled down and forgot all about them. And she is now in complete defense mode. All right, so we're going to turn her around again. Now, it won't take her long to actually settle down once she gets past this threat posture. Now, sometimes when they go into this kind of thing, they can hold this position for a long, long time. And they almost freeze into that position until something breaks them out of it. If she's settled a little bit. Now, what we can do, we can try her on a roach to see if that will change her mind and get her out of that threat display see if we can't find a nice roach for her all right we'll give her this this male dubia and see if this will make a difference Look at that, you see, she's not at all interested there. Nope, he's going to go in under there, so we'll leave him to it. She'll find him later on. All right. So what we'll do now is we will leave her to it, let her get herself established and sorted out, and we'll give her a little bit of peace and quiet now. And she will actually come out of that. But what happens is, is when they go into a threat display, we'll often see this with OBTs and things like that. They'll go into it and then they fix that stance and they literally just stay there until a time comes where everything goes quiet and then they feel they can relax and then they'll just walk off and do their own thing. So this is very, very normal behavior. Bearing in mind, being a fossorial spider, she is out in the open. So she is far more threatened than when she was, when we took her out of her webbing.
but what a beautiful spider. Absolutely stunning. Right then, so that was a massive result. We're really, really pleased with these, and it seemed to pay off this time round, leaving them in there a little bit longer. What we done was we waited until we saw slings, and then as soon as they turned to slings, we left them for roughly a week, and then today we've dug them up. So um, it seems to have worked really well. Very, very pleased. These will, of course, be available. Um, anyone interested, give us a shout, message us on, um, on Messenger and Facebook, and uh, we can sort you out there. They will also be at Kempton Show as well. So don't forget, guys. Kempton Show, we will be there. It's looking to be a really good day. And, of course, if you like the video, please, please, please hit the like button. Always hit the like button on the video. It really does the algorithm the world of good. And that's what we need. Right then. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. And I will see you soon, guys.